Okay, hey, welcome to the community podcast. Once again, you know, I'm I'm really on the wrong side of the screen, but you know, hey, you know, it's all good. Um, we're alone on a weekend. It's Boxing Day, but I'm joined by once again James Debo and celebrating his uh, season four of Discovering coming back and everything. But um, we're also joined by a special guest um, that usually has appeared on James's show. But this man is so knowledgeable, not just about um, the nation of Islam, but about everything. <laughs> you know, I like to think so. Um, so sitting next to me is uh, Zabdi. How you doing, Zabdi? Right, right, right. And then, of course, I got to introduce my man, James. So Peace. I flick over to that camera to James. Peace, everybody. And good to be back again. Big condo online. Um, I'm blessing. Yeah, no, it's, just, it's really good um, for you to be here. Loving that dashiki though, bro. Oh, straight from Cape Verde, you know, this dummy 40th country. Did, didn't find any indigenous people. Now, there's indigenous people, but the Portuguese claim that they got there first. Yeah. So I went to the museum to see, I went to a private museum to find out who was being visited Cape Verde before the Portuguese. When I get there now, yes, you see African sailors, um, particularly fishermen from Senegal. Because, you know, fishing was a big thing, and especially yeah. whale hunting, you go on forever. And then also um, Islamic sailors, the Phoenicians, and many more that came there. So the Johnny come lately, Portuguese, he got there last. Really? Well, I love to hear about the Phoenicians because those are the brothers I've heard about. Um, obviously, you know, during the uh, Trojan War or, you know, uh, or having more of a Greek background and everything. But um, James has just gotten back from like about four to five weeks. Um, he's been trapped here with us during the pandemic, but he went away. Uh, he right. finally got out. He's finally, to, he's finally escaped, haven't you, James? I had to get away, you know, get that spirit back. Man, we need that uh, vitamin D. We need the sun as black people. <laughs> yeah. it, it, this this weather's destroying us out here. We don't even think with our, the wise mind or the true mind of our nature. It's, yeah. it's not us, but we do the best we can. Yeah. Keep reading books, keep studying, keep what? cluing yourself up with spirituality and knowledge, and this is the best you can do living in a cold country. Yeah. Well, you know, like, um, so about today's discussion is, is that um, four seasons, well, three seasons uh, successfully of uh, discovering here on Big Condo Online. Um, thank you very much for that. But um, obviously, you know, we were hoping to branch the conversation out a little bit more. And uh, hence, uh, your invited guest here with us, um, Zavdi, but um, then some other brothers that have been on your show. Yeah. And so we're looking to create another, you know, like an offshoot, like a spinoff. Yeah. Um, around original peoples. Definitely. Now, now, the thing about it, what I would like to see on this show, you know, as a producer, is, is the fact that... <clears throat> Not like really like the same thing as discovering, but more of like um, more of like what about the original brothers that we as uh, <laughs> neophytes, <laughs> you know, in our college <laughs> or our so-called education system we get here. I want to learn more about the original peoples, more about the impact, more about the origins. Yeah. More about like the even like not I wouldn't really say the lifestyles, but more about like the what we have taken from it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And like maybe we could like kind of like look into that a little bit because like um, what we always examined on your show with discovering is is kind of like um, what we get from what just in various different conversations. So I'm going to ask you guys some questions today. Cool. Uh, you know, basically around that. And it's going to probably be some of the same questions that I've uh, asked of other people before. But stuff that I feel that, because even Zavdi said, hey, man, if you give me time, I, I can read up on that. So I'm going to start with my favorite one. If you know me, <laughs> I'm always about um, Empress Caliphia, right? Um, you know, the uh, West Malian um, Empress who, who journeyed. To the southern part of southern west coast of the Americas, uh, when it didn't have a name and everything, and you know, um, had a tribe of uh, female warriors, you know, in a paradise. So, as a comic book man, she was our first Wonder Woman, you know. Now, if you've seen Lovecraft Country, you would have seen this, but like, um, zombies say, hey, 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 uh, I didn't read that much about it, right? But I said, look, there was a book written in the 15th century. Called Esplanade, uh, about the, um, when the Spanish conquistadors um, touched 
touched down in um, um, the southern part of this western coast area that had no name then um, and encountered these women. Now, what I will also say is is that, um, James, you said that you talked to our good friend uh, Renico and Renoco. he was... Sorry, sir. Renoko. Yeah. And he didn't, you know, he he was on it and not on it. Why don't you tell me your version of his on it and not on it story about Calithia? Uh, how I put it is like, um, I think it's sort of what you explained before of like the evidence, what you saw that yourself. There's, there's not a whole lot of evidence out there, but it's maybe one book. Ev- some things are suppressed also. This is what we've got to deal with. So maybe that's you only can't one. trust those books. Yeah. So maybe there's only one piece of information that is you've got access to now. But there could be many, many other manuscripts. Anything of Califia. Um, I done a little research myself. I mean, it's just the same, like what as what you said in that. And um, now well, here's what a question about it, because my mind works also. Where well, we have original people all over this planet. First of all. Uh, you know, and, and let's not just go back to it's only black people in Africa all over the world, especially before the presence of Europeans came to America, mm. the presence of um, the Mongoloid race, because <laughs> that's there to do with ancient America to mm-hmm. the Mongolian type, but they are not the first. Right. They crossed the Burden Strait, well, much later than original people would have come. And then look at there's many different migrations of black people going to america in ancient time also i mean i'm not going back backtracking on lucia but i did i've mentioned that a few times where lucia is the oldest skeletal remains that they found and it's in rio de janeiro yeah you know so now i believe that the he is definitely older older than that but i mean dr imhotep he talked about african sailing fifty six thousand years ago you know, and some people say it's not really that hard to navigate. You know, you can throw a bottle in the ocean; it'll get make its way to the other side. So, yeah, uh, supposedly from West Mali, the uh, the currents yeah. lead you straight to the Americas. Yeah. So you're gonna have many, many different peoples. Also, Africans, come, black people come from the Pacific. Also, let's not forget about that. You know, these are seafaring peoples, and these also at one time get got to Madagascar. They got into Polynesia. But these, you see, nowadays how we get told things is we deal with the Melanesian in this state as they are the black people. But they would have been all black lands. Mm-hmm. Hawaii, they have a story of him. Um, he was black dwarfs there. Yeah. And this is what the Hawaiians said. And the Hawaiians spoke greatly of Africa. They considered. Oh, are we talking about pygmies? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, different people use different words. But we're talking about the same people. And something when I shared with Zabdi, he come in when he's ready. We talk, I sent you something about, um, it was a story about, there was a catastrophe about 65 and 65,000 years, 70,000 years ago or something like that. I remember, yeah. yeah. Oh, he's on it already, see. Mm. And what he was saying is the small black folks were the surviving populations wherever they are in the world, whether in Tasmania, because they're the small folks there. The highlands of Papua New Guinea, the smaller people are there. Uh, the rainforest do... People I encountered, the Eta in the Philippines, Malaysia, Orange Asley, Mani and Thailand, all shore people. Um, we can go further, the Congo rainforest, part of Cameroon. And Well, wait a minute, before you move on to that, let's just hit this story, because it seems like it's new for you, as it's new for me. So what was it that you were talking about? So, you know, when we were talking about, when we found the smallest black folks, yes, yes, I remember well. And the surviving populations yeah. from a catastrophe yeah, that have happened. And, and, and every year there was like um, a festival. That's right, festivals. Remember, yeah, yeah, festival, yeah, definitely. I, rem- I remember it. But mm-hmm. it was no story, but I remember, but we, I remember the story. Though. But it was interesting right. because we connected straight away on it. Okay. And, we're, and we're like, you've got to question yourself as well, like about, you know, the genetics of the small peoples. People are talking about them even in ancient England, even. The, and just because someone wants to use the word the wharf, we, it's just small peoples. That's all it basically yeah. is, isn't it? And um, now you've got some people who believe that the pygmies are a separate population. Now, the only way they can be separate is if they don't mix with other people. That's right. the only way you're going to be separate. Because you've got the Bantus, when they were crossing from West Africa, moving into Kenya, and when they crossed through Congo, there was also a mixture with Bantu and pygmies as well. So not every single person, like, so 
But this story, what I think it is, is like maybe people back in the day were small people. That's how could Lucia. Yeah, small, yeah. Like, I mean, it also is. You know, it also is is like climate, right? So where different people are, you know, it affects them yeah. physically, yes, sir. generationally. Yeah. So you know, hence where you had the Caucasian or the Caucasoid turning like uh, lighter skin than mm. the ones who were like raised in the desert. <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. And stuff like that. But, um, you know, so, yeah, you had that. Um, but, all right, go ahead. Yeah, so, I know what you're saying. I mean, I'm, I'm just trying to look at, um, well, the oldest peoples that they seem to find around the world. And um, have you ever heard the story? There was one in Indonesia. And everyone has their own creation story. There's something about a hobbit. Um, oh, well, J. Yeah, Tolkien and the Lord of the Rings. Oh, could, could it be? <laughs> See, I, I'm not big on movies. So, but, it's a book. <laughs> okay, yeah, 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 yeah. But what, what I mean is, is anyway, yeah. the Hobbit. Anyway, <laughs> it's like a story of like this little monster used to come out at night time and snatch people up, and like it's like a. You could the Hobbit it, wasn't a monster. No, no, I'm talking about oh. something in Indonesia that existed. <laughs> so, what some people at research has done anyway, they thought, well, maybe these people do the call the Hobbit mm. are the small black folks who mm. and and. And this is what it means, like, there's something that they don't want us to know how old we are on this planet. Yeah, I want to you know? I, I, I get to that because I find that bit of your discussion earlier fascinating. But before we get to that, let's go back to the seafaring part. Because um, what is important about, and where I wanted to end that Calivia thing was, what's important about it is, is the seafaring part. You know, like, we could go back to Mansa Musa even, right? You know, when his brother, Abu Bakr, a lot of people get it twisted, right? Yeah. It was Abu Bakr who actually was the one who took off with the three ships. That's right. Yeah. Right? Now, the thing about it is when the three ships left West Mali, what was this, 3rd century BC or something like that? 1300s AD, Mansa Musa. 1300 AD? Yeah. yeah. So, like, 1300 AD. 1300. 1300 AD? AD, so not not that long ago. I mean, well, so the thirteenth, so fourteenth century. Yeah, yeah, that's what they did. They call the thirty. Yeah, they call yeah, it. Yeah, okay, right. So like so, thirteen twenty something AD. So like yeah. only only a century before, you know, Califia. My point is, is the fact that that um, the ships never returned to West Mali. So it wasn't like, oh, well, they were destroyed. Why would they be destroyed? They were like filled with you know community and thing. Point is, is that they populated the world as you as we probably know it as you were talking about like the caribbean cuba australia all these different places this will lead us to hopefully the this um the creation of the omec heads and i would like to hear from zavdi around that like what is your understanding of the omec heads or did you not study that part either yeah, yeah i studied it but basically um if you read dr van Sittemer's book they came before columbus he talks about the omec heads as well and 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 his thesis is that the Ormic heads were um, those people that came on the ship. That's what I'm thinking. With Abu Bakr. So mm. they were either soldiers or they were kings. Or they well, were they were also, they were also el- elevated or, or, or um, how do you say, they were deified yeah. by the people they encountered. Generated, yes. That's, That's right. the word? Okay. Yes. Cool. Uh, yeah, because it's the first people there, like I say, black folks. Now, how did they get to America? There's many different ways they could have got there. Yes. You know, so, um, so okay, so you got the Burden Straits, haven't you? Now, one time, we, as a part of the time in history that we don't even deal with, and the Burden Strait was green at one time before this ice and all this. So this time, it was supposed to be a comfortable place for even people to live. Beringia, that was the name, Beringia. So ancient Africans... And when I say ancient African, I'm talking about people going, leaving Africa, populating Asia, people who stay on the coast and then ca- walked into America in ancient times. But then later on, when the Mongolians came, this is ice now. This is a totally different time. And then maybe it's down to then the looks change, the features on them. But with the Mongolian type, because I'm looking from Asia into America now, you've got to look at the comparisons of Mongolian empires so when we, we think of Genghis Khan, we're thinking of like the 1200 odd ADs, yeah? But when it go way before that Mongol invasions, the Zhao dynasty that um, took over the Black Shang dynasty in China, the Zhao's around about 1000 BC. 
around them times. The Shang's about, say, 1600, close to 2000 BC. Then there's a one that they don't talk about called the Shia Dynasty, which even go back further than that. So looking at all these different types of people I see in Asia and looking at these different types of people in America, and I can see... I can see a pattern. I can see a pattern of the Mongoloid or Mongols have expanded not just into inner Asia and in, into Southeast Asia and then later on the Pacific. They've also expanded into ancient America. So what they would have done is, is the small populations of black people that were in America at that time, there was too many of these new people coming over to absorb us. And that's what happens any society you go into. If you are the tiniest minority, later on down the line, your generation to get absorbed into that society. So that's how it works. But um, many different times, we have different waves of black people coming to America. Polynesians came, seafarers, and Melanesians. You know, the same people, basically, just all these different titles. But um, it's, it's important to know that America is just being a place where pe- a lot of people have... It's been no secret place... They made out like it's a place where only certain people got there. Loads of people have got there. You know, well the Vikings as well. Now, uh, now, now, you know, su- they came from okay, okay. Vineland. Now, su- well, they called it Vineland. Okay, actually. okay. Now, everyone always mentions about Vikings, but they don't talk about other peoples who got there. You know, what I mean, Vikings. I didn't say Vikings, but first, I just said they we got there. And also, let's talk about who taught the Vikings how to sail. There was black Vikings also. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't give him credit for nothing. <laughs> if, 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 yeah, yeah, because I know yeah. James told me a story about the black samurais and stuff I, like that. You know what I mean? Let's just say that, you know, there's... Uh, yeah, yeah, let's just say that black people were everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> you know it's, what I mean? <laughs> and stuff like that. It's just the fact that, that they hide the fact um, in pictures. Let me uh, let me ask you this one, um, um, Zombie, because, you know, I often tell a story about taking um, um, art... Um, studies in college and uh so we get to egyptian art and everything and uh my uh teacher had to tell me about how um you know they only had three color paints in africa you know they had uh alabaster white (laughs) they had luke right bronze which is black and they had rosetta red which is like red and brown so when they were painting the hieroglyphs and everything you know they had to you know, yeah, they had choices right <laughs> and stuff so it just so happens like people like the queen of sheba or cleopatra were painted white <laughs> just so happens you know and everything and so what do you know about um hieroglyphs the colors and do you because you were you were talking about like because of uh, the asiatic black man and all that kind of stuff Seeks the Asiatic black woman or whatever, but you know, as history goes, you know that wasn't always the case. So I mean, um, because I think we talked about it at one point, didn't we? That Sheba was white or something. Um, no, uh, no, I know Nefertiti no, no, was no, black, no, but no, we no, 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 no <laughs> let's let's. It was um, Cleopatra. You said yeah, Cleopatra and I said, supposedly um, was white. She, yeah, yeah, she because people are getting confused with Nefertiti. No, I never said. No, I'm not I, you. I, I never, I, no, I'm not you. I'm saying okay, some people said, thought that. Well, oh, th- these are all black, but we have to know which ones is who. Don't let them pass for black, you know. And let's not like whitewash as well at the same time. All right, all right, bro. All so, right, no, well, no, all right. Well, let's go to Zabi. All right, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Any of those queens were white. Yeah, but you have to remember that there's six, six or seven Cleopatras, not only one. Mm. You you have to remember I didn't know that. this. Yeah, there's more than one Cleopatra. It's like Elizabeth. There's only more than one Mark yes. Anthony as yes. well? No, no, no. There's one Mark Anthony, but no Cleopatra. It's a common name at that time, so there's more than one. Well, I guess, I guess, yeah. I guess it would be, yeah. There's more than one King James, more than one Queen Elizabeth, more than one... That's true, King yeah. King oh, okay. So, pe- you, so people have to remember that as well. Cause, okay. Because if you don't know that, you can get confused. I I am confused now. <laughs> so, so, but I mean, let's go back to the colors and artwork and stuff like okay, that okay. and the depiction of... You know, because they would like to try to hide well, that our African lie, kings. If you go down today to the British Museum, yeah, you can see many, many um, sarcophagi, and they they got different colors. Them they got blue. Mostly they're gold. People put, yeah, but if you look at, um, in the inlay, no, when you open it, yeah, inside it's got blue. 
they got yeah. black, they got green, mm. they got red, they got every color under the rainbow. Right. So when they're saying they've only got three colors, that's a lie. Listen, this woman was stupid, but I'm just yeah. trying to say yeah. she was trying to say mm. she was trying to she was trying to back up the movies. Yes. She was trying to back up, like, you know, how Egyptians automatically were just white with tans yes. and everything. And they weren't, you know, Charlton Heston, you know, they weren't black and everything. Yeah, exactly. Yes. That's what she was really trying to say. But what I was trying to ask you was, like, where is the the, the facts in, the, in that equation? Because I see a lot, because what happens is, okay, let me ask you about this then. Um, Napoleon, do you know about Napoleon's evasion of Luxor? Yes, yes. Right, so, like... Exactly, but well, not well documented. It is documented, hidden documented, but it's not in any movie. Um, so when when he was there, trapped for ten years uh, with a tail between his legs, is that he invaded the temples and he desecrated the um, the hieroglyphs, the statues, and and basically, with all the kings are you know Sp- black, Sphinx right? As well. well, yeah, the Sphinx as well. But so he cut off the noses. You know, he didn't like the noses, right? Cut off the noses, you know, tried to, like, hide the hair. They did these splotches onto um, the artwork. And maybe they maybe they were the ones who painted the women white. But either way you look at it, what is your version of his desecration of Luxor? Yeah, um, in Napoleon, he was an emperor. So, so and, and also, you have to remember Napoleon's, his role in, in the Haitian Revolution. Because um, while he was emperor... Haiti, it got free. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. While, he, while, he, while he was emperor, Haiti got free. So in Napoleon, he, he was an open racist. Yeah. And an open imperialist. Mm. And an open um, colonizer. Yeah. And slave owner, slave master. Yeah. You understand me? But at the same time, in Napoleon, he knew the truth. You understand me? So he knew what was going on. Because you have to ask yourself, why would the French emperor want to go all the way into Egypt? Like, of course. What business have you got in Egypt? Well, and he was trapped. Yes, he was, but he he went there of his own volition. Well, originally. Yeah, he, yeah. I mean, he was he was fighting the Horton. Yes. Right, and he thought, well, if we go this way, <laughs> which was the wrong way, and everything, and Horton kicked his ass and everything, mm. and left him alive. So basically, he went in to colonize because yes. he got no fucking choice. Yes. Excuse mm. my language, but anyway, yeah. So anyway, go on. Yes, yeah, so yeah, so while he was in Egypt, you understand, um, he understood that Egypt w- was the cradle of civilization. You, you, he understood more than most European leaders at the time, anyway, mm. about, about the history of the black man. Mm. He understood more, so but didn't like it. He didn't like it because at that time they were trying to promote like um, you know, the white man as 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 a, a Christ-like figure, basically as God. Yeah, Jesus. Really, at that time. Yeah. Yes, at that time. I mean, they did mm. face off uh, Muslims, though, didn't they? They did face off Arab warriors, didn't they? Mm. You know, because I remember there was a movie about that. You know, um, yeah, and everything. They faced off um, in Mamelukes. Yeah, yeah. Mamelukes. Yeah, yeah. Mamadu- yeah. Mamadu- 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 Mamelukes or Mamelukes? Mamelukes. Mamelukes. Yeah. yeah, they lost though, didn't they? Who lost? The Mamelukes or the French? No, no, the French. Yeah, they. Lo- he, he, in war, you win some battles. All right, yeah, but you know what I'm saying. It's like, I hate these yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, so in the end, you have to retreat. But yeah. while he was in Egypt, and you have to remember, while he was in Egypt, he, co- he took with him back to France a lot of material, a mm-hmm. lot of artifacts. Oh, yeah, a stole lot, it. A lot, yes, of course he stole it, a lot. They looted a lot. Yes. A lot. So, because people think he just went there and damaged stuff but he took a lot with him he was there 10 years bro yes mm. he was there for a long time now he likes to think that hey look we built a college <laughs> yeah. you know what i mean like we you know we gave you guys something and stuff like that but he took more than he gave back of course he did but but how come this is not in the movie didn't do that. of course it's not in the movie well movies it's even like because um, they write the history yeah e- even yeah, like right. egypt's one thing where they whitewash but whether they've made movies about ethiopia or whether you call it abyssinia and you've had like a white man as a king it's yeah, that's ridiculous it, it's just like you know, where are they going to do that to next do you know maybe because this but they couldn't pull that one in nigeria do you know what I mean? They, they try, what do you do? They try and lighten I wouldn't the put, I wouldn't put it past them. But, yeah. You know what I mean? yeah, yeah. <laughs> they had to find yeah. the story to tell. Yeah, I wouldn't yeah. put it past them. But it seems, I don't know, it's like, because like, you know, with Ethiopia, it's got that connection with, um, <clears throat> well, Menelik and, you know, going yeah. back. Yeah. Yeah. Semitic, Semitic people in, because in Ethiopia, like, and some people don't like to hear it, or so, but basically, you've got problems. I don't want to go into the, Problems in Ethiopia, but basically, who are the ruling class? 
Well, that, so where, where I want to go with that is, is I'll always see this everywhere I go, mm -hmm. and it will be the Semitic mix, or when I say Semitic, it could even be the Italian mix with some of them. Do you know what I'm saying? And these, this is why I like with Ethiopia, the people who are the indigenous people, are Romo and these types of people, they're not like the ruling class. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Remember that we watched there uh, when I sent you something about um, it was a black lady who does the program where she goes around Africa, uh -huh. goes to Sudan, she goes to Ethiopia and Egypt, and then uh, we were asking about the white Christ. Yes. Uh, yeah. And it, it 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 didn't seem like he he had a problem with it really. The white Christ. Um, he said that. Well, you probably thought, "Hey, you got a camera in my face." So yeah, 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 yeah. Could be because I sent you there. Yeah, say, yeah. Say I remember. What my, did you think of it? And the girl was asking him, "What color is Christ?" And he was saying that Christ is white. He's Jewish. He's, this was a priest in Ethiopia, and I was confused. A high priest. No. And he was saying Christ is white, and uh, she and she was saying to him, "But in Ethiopia, he's portrayed as a black man." Yeah. And and the priest was saying, "Well, because people in Ethiopia are black, so." They want to see Christ in in their image, but really we know he's what. That guy got yeah. paid. Let me let's it's talk about strange. Ethiopia. Let's talk about Ethiopia. It's very strange. Let's yeah. talk about Ethiopia because, like you know, we had our brother, um, you know, uh, Waldo on here, right? Um, um, and everything who gave a very good treatise on um, the Ark of the Covenant. Errol. Errol. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. he calls himself Waldo. Oh yeah, yeah. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 he's right. Yeah, mm. but um, so have you heard of the story about the Ark of the Covenant? Yes, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've heard about it a lot, man. Now, what, what? So, like, the thing about it is, I was blown away by the story because when we watch these movies, see, I'm American. I keep saying it. You know, it's true. But when I watch these movies, it's because I've been so conditioned. Yeah, pounded this in my head about Charlton Heston. And, you know, a Max von Sydow, you know, uh, the real Christ. But, like, the whole deal about it is the fact that whenever they do the movies, yeah, they say we're in Egypt, right? As if Egypt's not in Africa. Mm. I can, I will, I will ask any American, where's Egypt? And they'll probably tell you it's Egypt. What are you talking about? Not many will say Africa, right? Because yeah. it's not in our yeah. mindset yes. to know that Egypt's yeah. in Africa. Yeah. So, um, when they, but doing the stories, especially the Christ stories or the covenant stories, whatever, and stuff like that, you know, it would surprise me when Errol kept saying that this was Ethiopia or you just said Abyssinia. And I'm just kind of like, what the fuck? Because when we think of Ethiopia, we think of pygmies or, you know, we think of something less than. I'm talking about as Americans. I'm not talking about Okay, you. okay. <laughs> All right, man. Don't get insulted, bro. No, no. I'm just, I'm just, <laughs> don't, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it, you know. Just, yeah, I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah. So it was it was a conscious reasoning thing to find out that so when they took the covenant from the mount mount Sinai whatever um, and they took it to Ethiopia to be on the other mount tell me the story because you'll probably have it right okay so it, if you read the Holy Quran it teaches you about um, the Ark of the Covenants so what we believe is that the Ark of the Covenant was um, at the death of Moses. At the death of Musa, it was taken by angels into what's called Africa, into what's called um, Ethiopia today. And today it sits in, um, in a church called um, Our Lady of Zion. So it's there under God. Mm -hmm. But um, because it's under God, and, and um, eyes are not allowed to you know, touch, you know, you're not allowed to look upon it. Of course, right. Because so, yeah. you'll be seeing like yeah, the angels, yeah, yeah, yeah. So only certain priests are allowed to look upon it. But those priests, though, their father was the priest, and you know, and he gave birth to a son, and, and he taught his son, and the son grew up in that order, and then so yeah, it, yeah. So it's like um, a family thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. that so we we believe it's there, but also there's people that think it's in if you in in Egypt and other places. Yeah. But we believe it's in our, our Lady of Zion Church in Ethiopia in Africa. Yeah, but I mean, like, but Ethiopia was this strong place of uh, these stories, and yes. Um, uh, yes. I w should I say Christianity or you know whatever? And even so before Christianity, because if you, if you look at the book of Numbers, Moses he married in Ethiopia. Yeah. Ishmael married in Ethiopia. Abraham married in Ethiopia. Were they black? Yes, sir. They were black. I'm just saying in the movie they were yes, like you of know. Of course, like, it's Hollywood movies. Oh, I, right, know, I, I, listen, Again, bro, I know. I know. I know. I'm trying to course, you know. I'm course, trying to wake up black. the people out there. Of course, of course, of course, they were black. Of they were black. Every prophet of God in, in in the scripture was a black man. Yeah, all of them without any exception. Yeah, but like uh, I think we. I don't know if we looked for it, but I think we tried to find the um um the, 
the story of Moses? I mean, was this a real person or was it uh, a form of uh, storytelling? Moses. According according to scripture, it was a real person. But as a Muslim, you have to understand, like, um, these stories are there for a reason. It's like... in Parables. In our, exactly. Mm. So it's, the, it's it's lessons. Like, when I was a small boy, my father used to tell me stories. And even if the stories weren't real or they weren't based on reality... It that doesn't really matter. It's what I took from it. It's what I learned from it. That made and it's me also the period so of time. So who's really to say what is real and what's exa- not real? Exactly. Yeah. You exactly. know, I mean, I saw some National Geographic program where they tried to um, look for uh, the Red Sea where it was parted. Mm-hmm. And like... Um, You're never going to find it. Well, actually, <laughs> you know, because it's TV. <laughs> uh, they managed to find an area... Um, which wasn't as far as it was supposed to be in the story, like 40 days, 40 nights. But you found a small area where um, the waters recede, like the same as the waters here in West Kirby. I don't know if you know West Kirby. No, not very well, no. Well, like, so you know West Kirby, right? Yeah, yeah, over the water. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So out in West Kirby, um, you can go, um, there's a place called Hillberry Allen. Right, and like the waters recede every day, like at the time of the tides, right? The, the sea is there, I think it's the Mersey or whatever, but it will recede to the point where you could walk from this side, okay. West Kirby, okay. to Hillbury Island. It's actually just dry. You're like, what the hell? Every, right? every day, every day, and people do this, right? But then it's like, Oh man, if we don't get back in time, we're going to be stuck on this island. Like they got a coffee shop or something. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we're going to be stuck in this island. So when you come back, the waters come back. They don't come back fast, but they come back. But if you're stuck in the middle, you're in the middle of the Mersey. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Do you not know this? I've, you know, I've been, I think I, I, when I worked on the taxi years ago. Um, You've heard about I, it. I, 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 but I don't know much about. I don't venture it really around them places this unless man, unless I need to unless I yeah. need to. Yeah, but, but I'm just saying yeah, yeah. it's just a fascinating yeah. story yeah. about yeah, where where they were saying is, is that's interesting, how interesting that's how them. the people crossed yeah. was because the water receded and it was just like a, it's not that biblical of a phenomenon. Yeah, it's a yeah. natural thing. That of happens. course, nature. And so <laughs> there's a part in uh, Egypt around the Nile that does that. Okay, um, yeah. that okay. this natural okay. geographic. But if you read the Bible, many phenomena in the Bible they occur in natural light. Even a virgin birth, there's many animals that give birth without the seed of a, of a male partner. Did you know that? No, I didn't know. Didn't, yeah, there's certain, certain animals that just give birth without um, a, a male animal touching them. And even in, in in the plant world, there's certain plants that just produce plants yeah. without a seed. So, but that's, I'm not saying. That I don't want to go that far yeah, into know, the Jesus know, story know, and the Immaculate Conception. I know that, but all, all I'm I think, saying. I think it was something else going on. But all I'm, so, I know, but that's a whole different. <laughs> yeah, thing. That's I'm just saying that <laughs> many stories virgin. in the Bible, yeah, you know, of the river turning to blood, of of um, a plague of locusts. Many stories they happen in nature as well. Mm. Oh, you are talking about the plagues? Yeah, well, no, this is true. Yeah, so, so, so that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, either way, it's like these, like you know, these are like uh, fascinating, like uh, moments and stuff. Um, you know, um, and I'm trying to get back to you because I know I said I wanted to get back to something, you know, that you guys would talk. Oh, time. Uh, this yeah. was a fascinating discussion you guys had earlier because what do you? What is your feeling around daylight saving time? <laughs> <laughs> Well, me, go on. No, I'm, I'm asking you this, I mean, what you're <laughs> feeling about daylight saving. No, okay, what I mean, you know what I mean, though, right? Yeah, I know. Is exactly that, that like, I mean, like, um, it's it's uh, from New York. We're five hours uh, ahead of New York, um, eight hours ahead of California, and everything like that. So somebody was saying, well, can I play the numbers? <laughs> like if I told somebody what the numbers is, and then would I be able to travel back in time and let them know play no, that no, number? It don't work like that. <laughs> I know. No, it don't work like that. <laughs> I know it doesn't. <laughs> but no, what I was just trying to say about I agree with you when you said that time is man made. Yes. Mm. You know, and um <clears throat> now you said to me <clears throat> not to me, but you said on the show that in some people this is fourteen forty two. Yeah, for us Muslims it's fourteen forty two. You sure it's not older than that? I mean, where 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 are they calculating? Okay, that's a perfect question. Like we based I like the perfect question. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> we based time on the date on on the night that Muhammad he fled um, the holy city of Mecca to Medina. So from that night, that's when we calculate time. So that was the beginning. 
not of not of so, the universe, but no, no, no. That's the beginning of our that. Islamic calendar today. Yeah. So, so it it, it runs back um, fourteen hundred and forty two years. Well, see, the reason why I asked is because I think um, in olden days, supposedly um, there was something called the Gregorian calendar. Do you know about the Gregorian calendar? Which 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 the, the Gregor- Gregor- Gregorian calendar? Not that one, but I know there's a lot of other calendars. Yes. <laughs> so plenty. So yeah, many. yeah, go on. All right, that's something for you guys to have to do look up. But basically, it's supposed to be like about five hundred and fifty-two right now. Um, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. AD is it? Yeah. Okay. And everything like that. Uh, it's a five hundred five thousand. Um, I I didn't do my fact checking either. <laughs> but you know, um, either way, it's everybody like you said has their own concept of time, yes. and if they have their own concept of time, that means time is different for everyone. Yes, sir. Which makes it man-made. You know, no one has one set time period. So that's why when we're following the AD calendar, so to speak, we're calling it AD and BC, you mm-hmm. know, like basing it on the death of Christ and stuff. And um, when we're looking at it that way, obviously all these people that you're always talking about, James, is from before then. Yeah. You know, and and really where our problem is not just time, it's recorded history. Which is why I was talking to you earlier about the uh, Library of Alexandria. Yeah. And everything. So let's talk a little bit about our Library of Alexandria. Well, imagine how many manuscripts and all, all the evidence. and You don't even know how much has been burnt there. But remember, when people come in and burn stuff down, with they don't just... They haven't just burnt it. They've obviously took what they need to take before they get the burnt. You don't like... Only an idiot would burn a bunch of knowledge and uh, they haven't actually copied it or took something to keep a record of that yeah i mean saying? we're talking about records of uh maths calculus um science stories astronomy, poetry yeah, astronomy chemistry, astronomy, yeah. chemistry oh, biology um and there was a great as well yeah, there was a great, oh, definitely history, but there was a great, um, there's a great video on YouTube about it where they actually name a lot of um, the particular scholars at that time that were writing some of these, you know, obviously all having those weird names like, you know, <laughs> calculus or, you know, poultice or whatever, <laughs> something like that. But, um, so I don't remember at all, but, you know, you got guys who were doing um, dissections on people, you know, and, and, and it's not really crazy because then when you go back to the Egyptians about how they um, mummified, you know, their kings and queens and stuff. Yeah. You're like, who taught them this stuff? Well, a funny thing you say that, yeah. The oldest mummification they find is in Libya. Now, mm. it could be other places, they, maybe if they dig, but what has been found, the oldest mummification was in Libya before Egypt. And it was a, a black child mummified and it was his DNA came from sub-Saharan what they call sub-Saharan Africa not what I call it so that's that's all out it's all out in the open that so so that's like the oldest that is documented that we found yeah that's that's just what they found they could be older than whatever in Africa Uh, but back to the time thing as, as what we were saying before about time and the podcast I did with Zabdi when they asked me about how old is Allah to Humans. Well, yeah. Well, he said the, one day is five hundred fifty thousand. What one day? Yes. Yeah. Now the reason why I asked him this question, the the reason why I've asked him is because when I was out in Cape Verde, I went and did some astronomy out in the desert. So we're looking in these telescopes and you know looking at these stars and then stuff behind the stars and so what I was what I was basically doing is is a man called Laman. Um, he's an astronomer from Senegal, but he was te- he was leading leading it now he said he was talking about other planets and he was talking about venus and and i'm sure it was venus he was like one day to or 244 days to to man or to us on this earth oh that's kind of like like, he's he's speaking in light years then isn't he light years yeah but like what we got to ask ourselves are we being robbed of time on this planet yes we are we're being stole robbed and we get even robbed even more when when our mind goes into this, we play into this, oh, I've got to go to work, I've got to go this, I've got to get these so-called priorities done. we got to maximize the time that we have because we have so little of it. Exactly. You know, so 
we're not we're not living the true. And then you can look at time. Like I imagine someone who's in a cell for like thirty years. I mean, I don't think it goes quick for them unless unless maybe he's just keeping himself. Because time is a it's an illusion. And we are. I definitely once speaking to astronomers, speaking to religious people, speaking to spiritual indigenous people, and I start to kind of put things together and think, well, we are just time is just not enough on this planet. Yeah. That's why I've obviously you've got to get certain things done on this planet, you know. Let's well, not, we're we're trained to believe so. Yeah, but we look at like you for example nowadays. Yeah, you've got internet; they can study everything they want around this planet. They can get access to stuff very quicker than what we could get back in the day. We had to read books and go through this, go through that. It's so easy for them now, but even though it's easier, are they interested as they once was? That's the problem. It's you're only going to research what you're interested in or what you're being told about by your parents, isn't it? Mm-hmm. And a lot of people, let's be honest, like we back to our first couple of podcast chase where we were talking about all the people usually know about is slavery. Majority of people, this is the thing. Now, it, I believe we've got to have a balance. It's we, we've got to have this and we've got to have that. But when we talk about slavery, we talk about the last four hundred years or five hundred years. Well, you're going back millions of years as, as as we are. And what has happened during in those millions of years up until slavery is just too much. Too much of history. Trillions of years. Trillions of years, you know. Like I say, like we said before, let's not even give a date. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's a smart answer. We yeah. don't know how far we go back. Yeah, so... Um, and back to slavery, sorry. We talked about the Mamluks before, weren't we? Yes. In ancient Egypt, these were white slaves, isn't it? Yes, yes. So... I must say that because I, I, the reason why I mention that because we can't just think of black and slave go together. Yes, that's that's how, how we've been programmed. Where there was the Mamluks, white slaves in ancient Egypt. Yeah, well, also you know, too. I mean, you know, John so, Punch, you know, um, first slave bought by a black man, John the man, whatever, and stuff like that. So um, also on the plantations were uh, Dutch, Norwegians, French. Um, so it wasn't just a bunch of black people singing Negro spiritual songs and picking <laughs> cotton. It was a bunch of like um, white people on there too, dying in the sun, you know. Um, but we never saw that on Roots. Sorry, we never did. Never. So either way, it's one of the last topics I want to hit is, is like uh, when you talked about Pangea, mm. right? Uh, because I'm fascinated by this as well, you know. Actually, I'm fascinated by a little bit by cartography. You know, I don't know if you've been looking at any old maps and mm, stuff. I and like, a, and, I, t- I took and a picture of a few actually old maps in Cape Verde because they were different little maps. Well, yeah. yeah. Well, well, well. Yeah, I've got some pictures. The point them, is, yeah. the point is, you know, yeah. the world has changed over these many years. Yes, you know, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. the names of places and all of that. But when you talk about the time when the continents were connected. And everything, and it was called Pangea mm. and stuff like that. And like the thing about it is, is that um, you know Pangea had as above as is below, right? They had kind of like an underworld, you know, on the maps and stuff like that, you know. But my 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 question is now: this is where it gets twisted. My question is: is that when when we had Pangea in that time period, there was a time that the people thought that the world was flat, right? Everybody, this went on for centuries, right? You just thought, just go straight, <laughs> right? Don't fall off, but just go straight. Now, this time has come around again, you know, a lot of people are hating on it, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, flat earth, blah, 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 blah. But my point is, there was a long time that everybody believed this. Especially around time past year. So I just want to know what you brothers are thinking about that. Mm. All right, well, I, I can imagine from the point perspective you're coming from, your sounds up similar to the European when he didn't know about the planet. You know, he, like... Cause this, well, this, they had astronomers. They had sextets. No one. They had the. Uh, they had the Library of Alexandria. So I won't say. You, you only can't reason say they why no. No only reason why I mentioned that because when you mentioned about Pangea and talking about people on the planet, science don't attest to that. For example, right? There is no people according to them. But I don't. I don't really actually. Now, there's two things I look at with Pangea. One was we here at the time of Pangea. Number two. Has it only been the last couple of thousand years where these 
the African Ocean, what they call the Indian Ocean or the Pacific Ocean or the Atlantic Ocean. Maybe these catastrophes have happened in only in the last couple of thousand years to make, because like what I'm saying is like- if To catas- split the continent, you yeah, mean? Yeah, like to properly split Pangaea, to properly split it. Because maybe Pangaea did split, but not how we think it split. Maybe in the last, because the Sri Lankans were talking about in that area, what we call um, the Indian Ocean, the African Ocean, like Australia, India, and Africa connecting. And they talk about only in the last couple of thousand years, they believe that that happened, that catastrophe. So when we're talking about dates and talking about certain things, you've got to remember what we're talking about, you see, because it's like when we say about Mansa Musa going to America, this is like 1200 something AD. No, actually, sorry, 1300 something AD. If you're talking about the Olmec, you're talking about 1500 BC. Uh, so there's different time periods and we have to try our best to keep to these time periods otherwise we'll get lost with this one and that one but as far as uh, Pangea I can definitely believe people were here then or there's been catastrophes that we science is not talking about in the last couple of thousand years which some scientists do see yeah. that's the thing I'm not, it's not about science I'm not blaming science for nothing it's the person who's doing it and the person who's dictating it and you know, saying what something represents. Nothing wrong with science. Well, I think you have to realize we both use science. I think you have to realize that the word science is a word yeah. that was created by the Catholic Church. And like um for anybody who knows that the Catholic Church created a college for Jesuits to uh actually create science mm. and to create the Big Bang theory. You heard about this? Yeah. Well, yeah, I, yeah, about I heard about it. Yeah. 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 So like um their whole concept was you need to create this theoretical thing where there was a bang and it created the universe and the universe was created, but you don't know what the source of the bang is. By accident. Well, not by accident. <laughs> not, it not, just, to us, not to us, it, 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 You know, so there has to be a trigger to yeah. the bang. Yeah, yeah. And that is God. So that's what I believe about science. But anyway, go ahead. What do you believe about it? <laughs> I'm just trying to say, man, it's manufactured, bro. Science. No, it's interesting. It's yeah. Well, they did do it. It's theories and opinions and views, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, of course. So that's what it is. But if you're saying that the, um, the Catholic Church invented the Big Bang Theory, you where, does the, so? where does the thingy fit in um, in the creation story? Where does that fit in? Well, the, the, the creation is the fact that it's Seven the first days. spark. Okay. Well, see, see, the seven days is so that way, again, time being manufactured. It's not really seven days. We all know that it's not really seven days. We know that the seven days are like like seven millennia or seven eras. Mm. Do you know what I mean? For, for, you know, life to come out of the sea, for it to grow into mammals, for it to become man and all that. But let's simplify this and just call it seven days, okay. right? But the creation theory is the fact that the spark... Of the universe is God. So God created the universe or created the planet, created everything, and then let there be light and everything. And then seven days later, we have what we have as okay, mankind. So, so if we can go back to um, let there be light, when God said let there be light, what language was God speaking? Oh, ho, 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 ho. <laughs> this is not the good question. Right? <laughs> no, it's not a good question <laughs> because it's scripture. So you know it's I mean? in the scripture. So whatever who wrote yeah, yeah. the scripture, could, like, like, like you, you just said. I think you said something about like the Bible. I did the original text was in Aramaic, right? It's not in English. That's King James's version. So like when you say who what, what language it was, it was like whatever word it was. Let there be light was kind of like you know the light of the universe. Okay. Doesn't that make sense? I can't say that. Yes, in English, let there be light. <laughs> Luminescence. Well, tra- <laughs> right? well, translations and copies, like, you know, we were going back to that, isn't it? Uh-huh. It's like, for example, yeah. I've got a Quran in mind, but I don't speak Arabic. Um, Zabdi speaks both, so we all understand it totally oh, different. Yeah, but you know like, about Aramaic and everything like that. Yeah, of course. So, I mean, like, I don't know what they said in their Genesis story, you know, because as you said, there's so many different versions by so many different people and everything, but decretion is like it's still the same that the church still sponsored the jesuits to still come up with the theory and they of course didn't want it to be tied to them because it's like yeah yeah so science 
And what is it called? Like it's not like science and magic, but you know, it's, it's it was always separate things, so that way it, it can't be that we actually did this. Yeah, well, <laughs> well it's funny. You know? as, it's funny you say that about the separation because the they always put this separation on everything. You know, where like really, like if you, like, I'm an open-minded scientist, that's the ones I'm trying to look out for. And there's a few of them, they don't, not, not many of them around mainstream or nothing like that. But the ones who, like you said before about um, the God, uh, the God particle. Oh, yeah, the God particle. Now we're back to science. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, so. We never left. Yeah. <laughs> we never left science. <laughs> no, no, because, like, I mean, it's, it's people's different understanding of what maybe science is. Maybe the, how they're using science is mm-hmm. not the right way. True. You know, ancient Africans could make. Science and spirituality go hand to hand. When I say hand to hand, through the physical and the spiritual, I'm talking about the physical and spiritual is a connection anyway. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's balance. It's balance. Yeah. It is. We need both, especially on well, we're here. But science, Af- ancient Africans understood science completely different to how science could never be God. It can't yeah. be God. It's silly if you do think that, but. Today isn't it? You know Darwin. Theory, well, wouldn't it like, be? Wouldn't it be uh, man's understanding of God? Maybe understanding man's, man's, man's understanding of science. Trying to understand the force of nature. Well, I didn't say we could understand. No, that, it. That's, I said that, trying to that's understand a, it. It's an attempt, an attempt to try and to understand the force of nature. It's like Akhenaten, an attempt to try and bring the one God force back. An attempt, whether you're successful or you're unsuccessful, it's an attempt. You know. Okay. All right. So last thing I'm gonna say, because uh, Abdi's itching in the chair, um, I want to go to the sacred feminine that you guys were talking about, um, because like what you didn't explain, because I mean I know. Listen, you know the black woman is God. I get it. But what you didn't explain, which was an interesting Egyptian thought around it, is have you ever heard of the goddess Newt? Mm. Yeah, of course. Yeah, for sc- yeah. 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 Sky. Exactly. Well, have you ever seen the depiction of the goddess Newt? Yes, so, yeah. so she lays over the cow. planet. She not the cow goddess, you know. No, 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 no. That's Patel. That's that's Right. Yeah, yeah. No, Newt, Newt, Newt is sky. Sky, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you have sky, then you have some earth, don't you? Yeah, but I'm only talking about sky. Oh, sky yeah, 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 yeah. She's the goddess, the goddess feminine that lays over. The earth, right? You know everything because she represents night, night, yeah, and everything. So in her drawings, like in in the Egyptian drawings and everything. So like when you talk about like Mother Earth or the, the uh, or the sacred feminine and everything like that, you know, like um, I was thinking, oh yeah, first thing came to my mind was Newt and everything, you know, and how she's there, like um, uh, as you were trying to say, you know, providing, nurturing, giving, you know, all of those kind of things. Yeah. Um, and everything. So, you know, what do you think about a newt? Yeah, man. But just to clarify, we believe that the black woman is not God, but she's what they call the second self of God. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, but 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 in relation to um, the sky goddess newt, if you look, if you look at the depiction, she's black woman. With black I, hair, I, I think so. Yes, man, mm-hmm. with mm-hmm. black hair, and she has um. If you, and if you look into into in, into her body, it's full of stars mm-hmm. and constellations mm-hmm. and planetary bodies. Mm-hmm. So even that, so that indicates the sky and then um, you know the night sky and then um, and the universe itself. Well, the reason why I also thought about it was because you mentioned when you you were, you were talking about it, you mentioned the Big Bang theory. Mm. Because the Big Bang Theory is kind of like birthing of the universe. Yes, sir. So if she is kind of like the universe itself, yes. right, it's birthing out of her life, itself, which is what yes. we have is like, you know, it's not a creation myth. It's like the form of what women do when they have babies and births and stuff like that. So it comes out of her. Energy. Yes. You know? Yeah, of yeah. course. It, it is. A, it, yeah. Yeah, here it is. Yeah, man. See, you know what? You know, interesting. I, I know my stuff. Good. Yeah. <laughs> so listen, I just want to say before anybody says anything negative out there, right? Um, I can say that these are opinions, right? But I like to think that my opinion comes from what I read. Now, if you say you read too much, Chase, that's your opinion, <laughs> right? And I think this brother has a real world of knowledge that just internally comes from him that he also reads up on it as well. And as we know, our brother James is is always on it. So hopefully you enjoyed this as a different conversation 
um, and everything I definitely have and stuff like that. Um, I'm always fascinated when discovering comes back and it will be back and um, and hopefully this new form of uh, original peoples. Um, James will be bringing in, you know, actual um, panel guests um, to joining him. But this kind of conversation, that's what I'm thinking that we should be having because I think yeah. we went a little bit more in depth. Well, if, I can, if I can say something about me brethren, Zabdi. Brethren. I mean? Yeah, <laughs> we people, we go way back, you know what I'm saying, anyway. And when we get into that talks back and forth, me and Zabdi, we, we can go so... What do we say? How far? How deep does the rabbit hole go? Exactly. It's there's no beyond with us. I mean, just to touch Everything. a little bit on the service, what we were talking about last time about projecting your thoughts around the planet. An example I use when I met when I met the chief in Fiji, and I was saying, "Well, I'm having these spiritual kind of thoughts that I'm going to meet someone of importance." And then when I got there, there was like the whole thing was pre-planned. Do you know what I'm saying? And like we we were sending stuff back and forth where he. So many fa- thousand mile radius we have of our true connection. Do you know what I'm saying? And this is what they're trying to attack us with, with whether it's the bad food, bad chemicals or whatever. This is taking away us, the original people, from our true self. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I'm always happy to collaborate with uh, Zabdi. You know, he's a true soldier. You know, he, he goes way back. He's an OG when it comes to that knowledge in the beginning. He's not no Johnny come lately. He, he go way back and I'm proud to share the podcast with him. You know what I mean? Definitely, man. Pan African. Yeah, well, definitely. And, and hopefully, hopefully now yeah, he'll man. know what to go and read up on. Yeah, man. And everything. <laughs> but I had to uh, big him up anyway, you know what I mean? So people know, you know, he's a tr- tr- true, true person, man. You don't need to, um, you know, sometimes people worry about how a person think when I speak, how I speak. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah, of course, you know, so salute you. Salute you, Zabdi. Yes, anyway. yeah, man. Yes, All right, well, thanks a lot for that, Dan James. And, uh, you know, as well as Zabdi. I mean, I'm and, f- and thanks again, Dabby. Chase, as well, always, of course. Thank you. And everything like that. And, like, um, you know, hopefully you enjoy this. We'll see the, the, the their their joint podcast, which is more of a pilot for original peoples first. And then you'll see this podcast. Um, we want to say Merry Christmas to everyone out there. Oh, what a minute. As, as uh, James says, uh, whatever, man. Uh, Merry Cosmos. Merry Cosmos. <laughs> Merry Cosmos, you know, because... Yeah, the ancestors, man. We understood this whole yeah, yeah, yeah. thing from the beginning. Well, you know, as a black African, well, you know, as American, I would just say happy Kwanzaa. All right, either way we go, we out of here. <laughs>